Hello! With this video, I want to show a technique that will allow you to repair frozen Telecron rotors. If you've tried to repair any Telecron clocks, you've most likely come across one or more of these that just didn't work. A lot of these were built in the 1930s and 40s, so they're in the neighborhood of 80 to 90 years old. And what happens is the oil that's in them dries out, uh, gunks up, thickens up, and the output gear here just won't rotate any longer. The oil will also leak out of here and you'll find a lot of oil all over the gears on the insides of one of these clocks. There's several techniques that I have seen to try to repair these. I'm not really happy with any of them and the technique that I've come up with I think is the most effective and efficient way to go. What I have laid out here are all the materials that you need to do this and I'll point them out to you one at a time. You'll need liquid wrench, 3-in-1 oil, a synthetic clock oil, and you can get these small applicator bottles. I get them on Amazon and you'll put your 3-in-1 oil and the liquid wrench in these. What you have to do is drill a small hole in the side of the rotor so that you can get the solvent and the oil in here to clean it out and relubricate it. You'll also need a power drill for that and you're going to want to use a 3 32nd inch uh, drill bit. I will also be making use of some white lithium grease, a pointy nail set tool, a black marker, a hammer, and a clamp or a vise if you have one. Some repair techniques that I've seen involve placing this in a toaster oven, heating it up, and then placing some oil around the little lip that surrounds this output gear, and as it cools, it sucks the oil back into the rotor. I don't much care for that because it doesn't deal with cleaning out the old thickened up oil, and I think eventually, even if that works initially, in time, it's just gonna freeze up again. What I have to do is drill a hole in the side of the rotor, and the concern in doing that is you don't want to, there's gears on the inside of this, and you don't want to just pick any spot and drill in because you can damage it. Uh, however, my research has shown me that if you hold the rotor in this position, with the output gear on top and you have these three dimples, if you move across to this one here, and then turn the rotor on the side, where I have this little black dot already made, that's where you're going to drill a hole. And let me show you how I get set up to do that. Before drilling the hole into the rotor, you need to secure it so it's not going to move around. You can either use a clamp, just a regular clamp, which will hold it pretty effectively, but what's even better is I happen to have one of those workmate stations here. I just place the rotor in the vise that it comes with, tighten it up, and that's not going to go anywhere as I work on it. Now, I don't recommend just taking a drill, holding it, and going into it because you're likely to just slide around on this smooth surface and you won't make a good opening. What I like to do is with this, I have a nail set tool that's very pointy on the end. I'm going to position it over this little black dot and with a hammer, give it a couple of taps, which will make a nice indentation. And that'll be a guide for the drill bit to not slip out from. Let me just reposition this a little bit, get that black dot straight on top. There we go. I don't know if you can see it, but I do have a nice little indentation here. And hopefully that'll be sufficient for the drill not to slip. The other concern when drilling into this is the metal filings that you're going to create. You don't want those going inside the rotor because those can damage the gears on the inside. So to prevent that, that's what the lithium grease is for. Put a little bit of it on the end of the drill bit. and any metal filings that are uh, developed are going to stick to the drill bit. Okay, let's give this a try.
Okay, let's give this a try. I don't want to press hard. It's starting to dig into it. What I'm going to do is actually switch off to a smaller drill bit to make almost what you would call a pilot hole. Same thing with the lithium grease. And we'll try again. And I'm in, hopefully not too far. I'll get this back over to my other workstation and show you how I clean out the old oil that's in here. But I do want to show you how effective the lithium grease was. You can see all the metal filings that are stuck to the drill bit, which didn't go into the rotor. Anyway, let me get set up to clean that out. I have the rotor with the hole drilled, and what you want to do next is take your liquid wrench, which is a solvent, and it's going to loosen up the old dried up oil that's in here. Slip this in, just put in a little bit, put your finger over the hole, give it a shake, do that again. And you want to do it until it's completely filled with the liquid wrench. Once it is, it, I place it on a paper towel. I like to put a plastic bag under it because it will leak out. And you're going to let this sit and soak for about 24 hours, just like that. And at the end of the 24 hours, I will shake out all the excess uh, liquid wrench and then replace it with three in one oil. The rotor has been soaking now for about a day and I want to make one correction to something I said earlier. When I started to drill the hole in it, the first drill bit that I was using, that was not the 332nd inch. That one was actually a little bit larger and was the wrong one. The one that I ended up using that I said was going to make just a pilot hole, that was 332nd of an inch uh, drill bit. That's the size you want to use, and as you can see, it made a perfect size hole to allow the applicator tip of this bottle to fit into it. Anyway, what you want to do next is shake out as much of the liquid wrench here as you possibly can. And this will take several minutes to do, and I'm going to work on that, and once it is fully cleaned, uh, emptied out, then I'll be replacing it and filling it up with my three-in-one oil. One other thing I want to mention, I have now tried to remove as much of the uh, liquid wrench as I can. However, there's always a little bit left in here, so the thing to do is turn it upside down with the hole against the paper towel and let it sit for a couple of hours at least, and the last little bit of it will drain out. At that point, I'll put in my three-in-one oil. This has been draining now for a few hours. I don't know if you can see, but a little bit of it has leaked out. It's about as empty as I'm going to get it. So the next step is to fill it up again, this time with three-in-one oil. Same procedure, put some in. Give it a shake. And again, fill it all the way up. 
And this I can let sit for maybe 12 hours or so. It's not as necessary to, uh, to give it a full day the way I did with the uh, liquid wrench, but we'll give this about 12 hours and then I'll shake it out. It's been sitting now for about 12 hours or so, and I'll look to shake out the three in one oil. And again, this will take several minutes, so I'll work on that. Once I have it all drained out, I'll turn it upside down, give it another couple of hours for the excess to drain out through the hole, and then uh, I'll proceed from there. It's been sitting for another couple of hours. As you can see, a bit more of the oil has dripped out of it. And the next step is I'm gonna place in here just a little bit of synthetic clock oil. You don't need to fill it up, just, a, just really a little bit of a squirt is all. And the next step is to seal the hole. And I'll show you how I do that. What I use is a metal foil tape. This is a large piece of it. It's the kind of stuff that's used to secure air conditioning ducts or the vents that come out of a clothes dryer, that kind of thing. And I'll cut a small little piece of it. And just place it over the hole. But wait, before I do that, I want to make sure there's no excess oil on the edge of the rotor because then it won't stick. So with a bit of alcohol, I will clean that off. Okay, now I can place the tape. And what I do next to guarantee that this will not come off or that any oil will not leak from around the edges of it, I'll cover the whole piece of tape with some epoxy uh, cement. And let me show you how I'll do that. And just mix a little of it. I call it epoxy cement. It's also called epoxy glue. And then I'll just place it around the edges of the, uh, of the tape. And this usually takes about five, 10 minutes to set up. And once that has uh, cured, I'll be ready to test out the rotor and see if it's working again. So we'll let that sit. And again, give it that five, 10 minutes. The glue is set up. What I wanna do now is place it into a coil assembly and turn it on and give it a test run. Try to zoom in for you here. Okay, seat the rotor. I have it plugged in. Let's turn it on. And it's running. So there you go. A pretty simple technique to restore frozen Telecron rotors. If you plan on repairing any Telecron clocks, you're likely to run into this situation, and I'm hoping that this video will help you to successfully repair them. That pretty much wraps things up. Bye for now.